Hi, my name is Andrew Sayed, and this is an overview of the Keep Digging Gold 5th place solution for the RSNA Intercranial Hemorrhage Competition. Ok, first let me introduce the team in no particular order. Tin Doong is a big data scientist who holds a PhD in robotics and has 10 years of experience in academia as well as AI startups and scale-ups. Duke is the Chief Data Engineer of Polexi, where he's in charge of data engineering and data science, and has been cackling since 2017. Back is a master's student in Korea. His research is in medical image processing and emotion recognition. Tone is working as a senior research scientist at Bin AI in Vietnam. Last year, he is a full-time research scholar and holds a PhD and master's in electrical engineering. And myself, I'm a petrophysicist currently working in the oil and gas industry in Kuwait. We often use CT scanners to characterize samples of reservoir rock, so that experience came in handy for this competition. The purpose of this competition was to use 2D axial slices to firstly detect if any hemorrhage was present and then categorize the hemorrhage into five classes, essentially making six classes. We pre-processed these two 2D slices using two pipelines. The first pipeline was to create a three-channel RGB image where each channel corresponds to a different CT window, brain, bone and subdural. These three windowed images were then stacked and cropped to create the final RGB image to feed to our models. The second method also created an RGB image but the red and blue channels are spatially adjacent CT slices, which we were able to identify from the DICOM metadata. A subdural window was applied and it was cropped. Cropping was important to remove as much of the black, air, black space as possible, i.e. air, and the CT scanner headrest. Our team used a total of nine different model architectures, which you can see here with the stage two private leaderboard scores. The first column here shows which pre-processing method we used, and then the next column shows what the architecture was. So we used a mixture of ResNet, Inception, DenseNet, and EfficientNet. Each model was post-processed, and then the final stack gave us a private score of 0.045, which gave us fifth place in this competition. Our strongest model was the EfficientNet V5 model, which took about a week to train on two RTX 2080 Ti GPUs. Predictions were then post-processed by once again reconstructing the 3D volumes. The idea here is again to use the information from adjacent slices and push our predictions for the individual slices either closer to 1 or 0. We did this by creating a binary classifier for each of the six classes and then feed our current predictions as a feature to the target image as well as the two adjacent images. We also added basic statistical features like mean, standard deviation, skewness, etc. to the original predictions. The six binary classifiers were built using gradient boosted trees in H2O AutoML and trained on the out of fold predictions for each model. The nine post process models, along with six classes, gives us a total of 54 features which we can use in a stacking model. A convolutional neural network was used to learn the correlation between the nine models and the six different classes, since there is interdependence between the classes, before creating a final prediction. We also used a light GBM models with the 54 features to create a final prediction. Both models were trained using our out of fold predictions and the average was used for our final submission. The weighted log loss metric makes it a bit tricky to compare our results to previous studies. So for this purpose, we calculated the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve. A study published earlier this year reported ROC scores in the region of 0.93 for a similar six class problem. Our model is achieving scores in excess of 0.98, but this success is partially due to the fact that we almost had 10 times more data to train with. This is a testament to how good this dataset is and has demonstrated the value of labeling these huge datasets. So many thanks to all of the image annotators. Lastly, here are some interesting findings from this competition. One thing that was commonly reported was that even with the large size of this dataset, it was still very easy to overfit this data. Most of our models only needed around five epochs to train, which made early stopping essential. Both pre-processing methods had their strengths and weaknesses. So method one had the advantage of using multiple CT windows, but lacked spatial information, which is probably why this one benefited most from post-processing. Where method two may have more information from the spatial component, but may have lost some detail due to the use of a single CT window. One thing that was clear that treating this with a, as a 3D problem was the key to success and we wouldn't have been able to achieve these results if we tackled this as a 2D problem. This is an important consideration when label, labeling future radiological datasets. Okay, that's it, thank you. We'd like to thank RSNA and Kaggle for organizing the competition and everyone involved with annotating such a great dataset. We hope these results are useful and if you have any further questions, please contact us via Kaggle.